Praise the Lord. Good morning. Well, there are things we are going to do. The man um, who is uh, supposed to be here to give us the word this morning and his entire church, they're not here yet, but they're coming from Trenton, all of them. So um, I'm sure there's something we can do while we're waiting, you know? <laughs> I, I just wanna say good morning and welcome, welcome. Um, um, not only are we here, but there are others who are uh, joining us uh, via Zoom, okay? And I'd like to welcome them too. And I see a hand up there that's waving. All I see is the hand. I don't know who's behind the hand. Hi, hi Val, good morning. Um, um, those of you who know me know that I'm not usually standing behind this microphone. So you'll have to bear with me this morning. Uh, <laughs> thank you, whoever that was. Someone over there, it's okay. Um, um, I'd like to start off by reading scripture, if you'll bear with me. It's, everything is in my phone. I will be reading from Psalm 146 in the New King James Version. Thank you for standing. And it reads, Psalm 146, the happiness of those who, whose help is in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth in that day. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. By the way of the wicked, he turns. But, I'm sorry, but the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that we are able to uh, come together with one another and worship you. H hallelujah that you are here. You are here in our presence, Lord God. Not only that, but we brought you with us, Lord God. You aren't just here. You are also with those who, who worship by, via Zoom, Lord God. We are in your presence, Lord God. And Lord God, we have come to offer our worship and our praise to bless you, Lord God, as you bless us with your presence. We thank you. You are here. You are here. And we are blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I was going to ask that we give the Lord a hand clap of praise, but you did it automatically. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is wonderful. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we, are, we now have our announcements. Um, I don't see them up there, and I wasn't, well, upcoming events. 
uh, you may be seated um, unless you want to stand and praise the Lord some more. I'm always welcome to that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, the announcements for the week of January 31st, 2021. Before I do that, I, I would really like to be thankful for today. This is our first real fifth Sunday. There have been other fifth Sundays. They happen three or four, four or five times a year. However, fifth Sundays are special for us. And um, the man of the hour, um, Pastor and Dr. Um, Nate Thompson, who's coming, um, is also, um, uh, it's our reconciliation, our prison ministry Sunday. And he is someone we met during um, our, uh, our prison ministry days. So today is a real uh, fifth Sunday celebration. And I'm just so happy. I'm so happy that I am um, the worship leader for, for today. This is my first time being the worship leader. And I praise the Lord for that. Thank you, Lord. So announcements. If you'll uh, look up there. Oh, I don't need my glasses. Uh, these are birthday celebrations. Um, Bela uh, Ramta Hall on February 1st, which is Monday. Um, our sister Daisy Hill on Tuesday, February. Wow, look at that. One, two, and three. Uh, Daisy Hill on February 2nd. And then our sister Zoanne Harris on um uh, February 3rd. We have all, all kinds of ways in order to uh, wish them happy birthday. But right now, what we usually do is sing happy birthday to them loud enough so they can hear wherever they are in the name of Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Are there any other? Okay. Um, um, we're going to have a uh, meeting on February 23rd or 28th. I'm not sure. But for that meeting, annual report to do. It's the last Sunday in February. Okay. Um, so, well, there it is. We have a, men a membership meeting um, so that all of your reports, if you, if you're, uh, responsible for doing a report, especially a financial report. They are due uh, on Monday, February 15th. Uh, I guess the people who need to fill those out know to whom to send them. Okay, thank you. Okay, now here it tells you what your report should, uh, all reports should include financials for 2020, unless there is no First Park Baptist Church income and expenditure associated with the group or ministry. I guess that is uh, self-explanatory. Anything else? Uh, oh yeah, Bible study on Thursdays, February 4th, 2021. Uh, via Zoom. My sister Daisy and I are the two teachers. So one week you'll hear from one of us and the next week you'll hear from the other one. So uh, praise God. Um, and then we have every evening, which has been really a blessing for months now, every evening at six o'clock, um, we gather on the phone for prayer. Uh, sometimes there are two or three of us. Sometimes there are 10 of us. Whoever comes, we just lift up each other in prayer. We have a long prayer list that we pray for each night. Um, one of the great things that has happened during our pan pandemic, before the pandemic, we had prayer every Wednesday night here at church. But during the pandemic, we began, to, not every night, every Wednesday night, but during the pandemic, we now have prayer every night, seven nights a week, which has been wonderful. Uh, the, you can reach it by phone. The phone number is up there, 848-220-3300. 
And uh, then you have to put in your access code, which is 152-3848, and then the number sign. Uh, join us each night, usually from six to around seven, but there are many nights when we go over, way over. Praise the Lord. Um, there will be a deacon's meeting on February 8th, a trustee meeting on February 15th, and via, via Zoom. I guess those are both Mondays? Yes, okay, because they're usually. Uh, oh, and I was informed by our uh, wonderful uh, deacon that there is an official board meeting tomorrow night via Zoom, same time, 7. Okay, so those of you who are... Uh, who have responsibilities. There you go. And now comes to one of my favorite times in our service. Um, I, for, I um, have been uh, a part of this ministry, but because of uh, COVID, things have changed. But we can always praise and worship the Lord. And so right now, I'm going to turn it over to our praise and worship team, and we are going to worship the Lord unless okay Charlie you have something all right are we ready morning church good morning church I'm so glad to be here amen amen why am I glad to be here because this is the time that I can come together with my brothers and sisters in Christ the family I chose amen Amen. This is a good thing. Amen. Welcome online visitors. Please feel free to worship with us. Amen. Amen. You don't have to sit there if you don't want to. This is the time when we give God some glory. Amen. Hallelujah. This song talks about being a friend of God. Amen. He called us his friend. Amen. Amen. It says, who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you are mindful of me? How you love me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? You hear me when I call. Yes, is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? That you hear me when I call, when I call. Is it true you're thinking? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me, how you love me. It's amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend of, I am a friend of God. Friend of God, I am a friend. I am a friend of God. He 
how you hear me that you hear me when i call when i call is it true you're thinking is it true that you are thinking of me how you love me how you love me it's amazing it's amazing i am a friend of god i am a friend of god I am a light and saved us and sanctified us and called us his friend. Amen. What a privilege and an honor to worship at his throne, to be called into his presence as his own. Is he holy? Yes, he is. You are holy. Oh, so holy. Thank you, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. Oh, so holy. What a privilege, church. What a privilege. What a privilege. And an honor to worship at your throne. To be called. To be called. Your own. Is he faithful? You are faithful. You are faithful. 
his way. They want to say usher because we don't need to help the Lord out. All we need is your willingness to just say yes Lord. Is there a yes Lord in this place? Is there a yes Lord in this place? Not for me because I can't do nothing. I can't help you. But if you give the Lord your yes, hallelujah, he will make you, he will make you better. Amen. Lord make us over. Amen. Talk about the bread of heaven sent down from glory. Amen. He was a carpenter, an awesome ruler. We call him Jesus, the master, the savior. Elohim El Shaddai, the holy one, the king of kings who died to set us free. Amen. That's who we're talking about. Yes, Lord. Can we give the Lord a yes this morning? Bread of life. Thank you, Lord. Sent down from glory. Yes, God. Many things you were on yes, earth. God. A holy king, a carpenter. Thank you, Lord. You are the living word. Yes, God. Awesome ruler. Yes, Lord. Gentle redeemer. Yes, God. God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. You are the living, said bread of heaven, sent down from glory.
say Jesus, Jesus, that's where we call you. If you know he's the living word, give him, give him living word praise. Give him all your worship. Oh. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Sing, oh. the praises of his people. We bless him when we praise him, and he comes down and dwells with us when we praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We will continue the praise by singing our congregational hymn, How Great Thou Art. The words will be up there. Man, can we all stand for our helm this morning? Yes, how great he is, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout glory.
be seated right now. We will have our congregational prayer, which will be done by our friend and our uh, wonderful Reverend uh, Rich Hogan. from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us, us, right pastor, the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciled the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Father God, we indeed do thank you for that message. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to be reunited with God. Mm. Father, it's, it's my prayer that, that you never allow me and, and most of us to forget what our lives were like without you, Lord. How empty, how hopeless. Mm. We continue to thank you for the difference you make in our life, Father God. We continue to thank you for the individuals who thought it not robbery, just to sow a seed in our life. To give us hope when we're in that hopeless situation, Father God, to, to, to tell us that we, we that God had planned for our life. <sighs> the song says that the living word, and it is the word that makes a difference, Father God. We thank you for your divine word. We thank you for son Jesus that you sent that we can be reconciled back to you, God. We thank you, Father God, that the difference it makes, even at a time like this, Father God, where there's so much hopelessness in the world, where folk don't know, you know, what's going to happen. We thank you for being God all by yourself. There's a song that says, this may be the last time. I don't know. I, like so many others that are here today, Father God, and, and, and intend to give you the worship and praise that you so rightly deserve. We continue to pray a continued blessing upon First Paul, that you continue to allow your divine Holy Spirit to rest through and abide here, Father God, that you continue to fill the leadership of this church with your divine wisdom that can continue to move forward in line with your will and your way. It's a fervent prayer, Lord, that those who of us who have lost loved ones, Father God, that you continue to fill that space with your presence. Continue to keep us safe, Father God. Continue to keep in our mind and our heart the fact that you have us covered with the precious, precious blood of your son, Jesus. And the difference that makes, Father God, even at a time like this. It's our fervent prayer, Lord, that something that is said today, something that, that, that is preached, Father God, uh, something, even a smile, a comment, takes root mm, and continue to, to, to encourage us Father God continue to keep us rooted and grounded in your love mm, we thank you for your love Father God mm, that first song that got sung who am I that thou art mindful of me I, I, I am a friend of God 
That is just an awesome thought, Lord, that, that you look past our faults, Father God, that you look past our sins. And you love us anyway. Mm. One, 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 one writer says that you, Scripture gives us permission to come exactly as we are. Mm, Father God, but your love <laughs> won't allow us to stay that way. And we thank you for the transforming power of your divine Holy Spirit, Father God. We thank you for the difference it makes in our lives. <sighs> so continue to guide, Father God. Continue to keep us encouraged. Praying for each household that's represented uh, in this service, Father God. Not just in this sanctuary, Father God, but online. Uh, keep us rooted and grounded, Father God. Keep us uh, trusting in the faith that we, you, you, you've given us. We love you, Lord. Praying for the preacher of the hour, Father God, that, that you give him your divine wisdom, that he would continue to feed us in a way that, that keeps us rooted and grounded, Father God. We love you, we praise you, we thank you. And we pray this prayer in the blessed name of your Son, who is our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus the Christ. And with that, we say amen. As we have our trustees come at this time, if there is anyone with an Android charger, please allow us to use this at the moment for some technical uh, concerns. If you have an Android charger, look at God. Android, thank you so much. If you can um, meet us at the on the side here with an Android charger, and we'll be sure to get that back to you. Amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout glory. glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Yes, we cheerleaders for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout glory. glory. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. I just, I needed, I didn't have my paper, so I didn't know. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, that sounded good for them, but I said, praise the Lord, everybody. If you come here to praise them, I dare you to put your hands together right now and give God glory in this room. In the strong name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, Mario, raise up a praise in here. God has been good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I dare that you indulge me for a moment because this has been a rough week for somebody. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the building. It took me a lot to press out this morning. I even pressed out in a suit and I haven't worn a suit in six months because of my medication and my legs swelling but how about this hallelujah that god is still in the healing business yeah 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 broke my glasses last night so i don't know much bible miss dorothy told me to uh do the um watch your voice watch your watch your voice uh told me to do the the trustee invocation for giving. Well, how many know that giving is a lot of things? Giving and be given your money. Giving and be given your time. Giving it also means giving a praise. But I tell you, give and it shall be given unto you. I don't know about you, but there's a loosening in my seat and there's a clapping in my hands because God has made a way for me to give. I don't know about you, but I tell you right now just to give God glory for about 30 seconds. Come on. What you know about Jesus? What you know about Jesus? He's all right. What you know about Jesus? He's all right. What you know He's about right. Jesus? He's all right. He'll be a lawyer in the courtroom. He's all right. He'll be a father in the courtroom. He's all right. He'll be a father for the 
Oh, there it is. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Mario. The Bible says to give and it shall be given unto you a good measure pressed down shaken over shaken together and running over and will be poured into your lap for with this measure you use, I will be measured to you. Give, folks, and it'll be given back to you. Not like you gave it, but more than you gave. That's good news. And he says, when you shake it together, it'll be running over. In other words, you'll have some, some for somebody else. Amen? And for what with measure you give, it shall be given back to you, good measure, press down and shake it over. Somebody give glory as our ushers prepare ourselves for our giving time. We are gonna come up, we are gonna put our offering in the basket, amen. Online, we give by Giveify, we give by uh, Cash App. How else do we give, Ms. Ms. Dorothy? Oh yeah, we got a Tithely, you can get through tithely, you can press your way. So come on down this aisle and give unto the Lord, all ye. Oh, I'm satisfied with Jesus. 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 Oh, I'm satisfied with There's a high spirit in this room. Hallelujah. And we thank and praise God for it. Let us all pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. First of all, Lord God, we thank and praise you for your presence. But Lord God, we also thank you for your presence in our lives to be able to give to be blessed to give and Lord we ask that you take these mere moral parcels of giving and you bless it and you have your way with it 
So we love you this morning and we give you glory, most all the honor and the praise in the strong name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen. I am now going to uh, introduce the speaker of the day. Uh, I was looking forward to uh, uh, introducing his wife. However, I don't see her. He said she's on her way. So uh, maybe later. <laughs> Dr. H. Nathaniel Thompson III. To me, he's just been Nate, my friend. <laughs> he is the pastor of the Open Door Faith Fellowship Ministries in Trenton, New Jersey. Ordained into formal ministry in 2000, Dr. Nathaniel Thompson currently serves as the senior pastor of Open Door Faith Fellowship Ministries in Trenton, New Jersey. That always warms my heart when they do that when they greet each other. Thank you, Lord. Sorry. Um, Dr. Thompson earned his Doctor of Religious Education from Calvary Christian College and Seminary in 2013. Formerly incarcerated himself, Dr. Thompson works daily with currently and formerly incarcerated men and women helping them prepare for work and re-entry into society at large. In support of this effort, Dr. Thompson speaks with churches and other groups about the need for interaction with men and women going through re-entry and the church's role in that re-entry process. During incarceration, Dr. Thompson worked with men dealing with various mental health concerns, seeking out ways to aid them in handling the pressures of incarceration environment. Since his own re-entry, he has partnered with advocacy groups and legislators in an effort to advance changes in how incarcerated individuals are treated. During their custodial time and after their release, with a particular focus on those with mental health concerns. Dr. Thompson serves the growing congregation at ODFF, working to share the message of the gospel and empower the saints to carry out the great commission to evangelize. He also drives, I'm sorry, he also strives to see the body of Christ as a whole come together to bring about change in the world by showing the love of God, first of all, to the household of faith and ultimately to the world at large. Dr. Nathaniel Thompson, did I see Barbara for me? There she is, oh, back there, good morning. Um, could you please stand so we could give you the honor to which you would do? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, right now, we are going to be ministered to by our, our, our praise uh, team, uh, praise dancers. And then after that, the next voice you will hear will be Dr. Uh, Thompson to bring us the word. Amen. Amen.
for preparing. I know we have some visitors in the house. If you could just wave your hands this morning so we can acknowledge you. Yes. Well, praise the Lord, somebody. You know, our pastor is so happy right now in heaven. Amen. That's right. Because that's where a lot of you have come to know our church. Amen. Through our great Reverend Rufus McClendon. So it is an honor that his friends and family have come to celebrate and still worship with us on Reconciliation Sunday. Amen. Put your hands together. Amen. 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 Love that endures is your 
Say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If 2020 took you by surprise, say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you're longing for your loved ones, say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you're hurting in your soul, say Jesus. Say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you're tired of doing another zone, say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You don't got nothing to say. Say Jesus, when all is fell. Jesus, when you're tired of doing things on your own, you just say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, he's a friend to the friendless, his Jesus, 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 no money in my pocket, I can call on Jesus, he's my provider, Jesus, when I'm lost and don't know what else to do, Because you ain't going to always be here when you're going through, you know? All right, so, Jesus, call his name. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, Thank you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Let's go to the word. We're going to go to the word. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, Jesus. 
Imagine what the last few days have been like. It has been a time and a half. But the grace of God is the reason I'm standing here today. Uh, my wife is over there, and then don't don't get comfortable, sweetie. I'm, I'm gonna call you. You can, you can't hide. I'm gonna call you. You know, everybody loves, you can sit down. Everybody loves to pray. We love to talk about and to pray for the pastor. We love to pray for the leaders that we see and the things that they go through. But I'm going to ask you to keep her in prayer. Reverend, you know what I'm talking about. Because sometimes the weights we carry spill over. My shoulders aren't big enough to carry them all. And I'm grateful that God has placed somebody by my side. You know, I used to say that she helps me carry the weight, but the truth is she just carries me every now and then. And this has been a moment in my life unlike any other where I have had to carry some things I thought that I would never have to carry some weights just from being a pastor, some weights from being a father, some weights from just being who I am. And it got to a point where it was so heavy. At one point, I sat in the room and I told her, I said, baby, I can't take this. This, this is just too much. And she looked at me and she said, he didn't bring you this far to leave you. We gonna be all right. And I want you to understand something. That pronoun meant a lot to me. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, when she said, we're going to be all right, that meant a lot to me. See, some people will say, you're going to be all right. It's going to be all right. But she said, we are going to be all right. That meant I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be right here, and we're going to be all right. This weekend, I went away to try to get a little encouragement with some, some brothers in the faith, and while I was away, I, I woke up. Yesterday morning, uh, I just want to share my, my, my last couple of days. And I woke up on yesterday morning. I'm so glad to have Elder Rivera here with me. This is my assistant pastor, Elder Jose Rivera, and his wife, Sister Charity, is back there. And some of the saints from Faith Fellowship are with us on this morning. But I get a text message at like five something in the morning. You need to come home. A pipe burst above the church. The building is flooded. I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. I didn't have enough, and so I called her, and I called them trying to find out what's going on. Well, I'm nowhere around. I'm two and a half hours away. 
And when I finally got somebody on the phone, they said, stay where you are. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. Stay where This morning is the first chance I've had to walk into my church and actually see what was going on. And where you would think that I would be so upset, the Lord began to show me his provision right away. Because when I was invited to come to preach this morning, I told the church we're all going. So we weren't having service in the building this morning. So the pipes breaking and the water on the floor don't mean anything to me right now because I'm not there. I walked in the room and I, I grabbed my tablet. You know, we don't, we don't become so technology sound now. We, you know, we don't do things with old paper anymore, you know. I know. <laughs> so the jersey, I still do. Uh, that's all right. I, I still carry my notebook, trust me. Uh, but I opened up my tablet so that I could begin to get prepared and to, and to, and to pray into the word. And uh, the page was blank. And I said, okay, we got a problem. <laughs> and I'm hitting the button. And finally, if you're anybody who knows technology, you know you hit that button long enough and the little battery comes up with a sign that says, ain't no power. <laughs> So you, you can put that paperweight down because it ain't going to do nothing. I said, okay, well, Lord, we got to fix that. That's why she asked for an Android charger. I needed it. I said, okay, the pipe breaks. The church is flooded. I got no tablet. What, what, what am I supposed to do? And then I began to hear the strains of praise. And then I began to hear the words of worship. You see, long before there was electronics and tablets, long before we had buildings with fine structures and all that kind of stuff, the people of God had one thing, and they still have him today, and that is Jesus. In the face of everything else that's going on, I don't need a building. I don't need technology. It doesn't matter. I still got. Okay. So you, you, you kind of know why I just feel like praising God on this morning because all, I could sit here and I can tell you about all the stuff that's wrong and all the weights and all the issues and all the problems, but I'd rather tell you about the problem solver. I'd rather tell you about the one who makes the weight light. I'd rather tell you about the burden bearer. I'd rather tell you all about Jesus because I know how good God is. And then you, 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 you see, I know everybody has that little piece of their testimony that nobody's heard yet. And I got some stuff. Oh, <laughs> I'm just so glad. I'm so glad. You have no idea. I'm fighting back tears. You have no idea how glad I am to know the Lord on today and for all that he has done and is yet doing in my life. And I'm standing here today. I've said this already, but I really need to emphasize I'm only here because of him. And, and, and I hope you get that by the time I'm done. I hope you understand what it is to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Not a church member. Not, 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 not a church member. I've dealt with church members. I don't like them. Just, just so you know. I know the pastor. I'm sorry. The pastor's not supposed to say that, right? I'm not supposed to say that? Okay. All right. Y'all edit that out. Y'all take that out. But, but understand something. Church members bother me. Christians I love. Church members bother me. Church members have a priority in their church. Christians have a priority in God. Church members are concerned about their positions in the church. Christians are concerned about how close I can get to God. Church members are concerned about my title in the building. I'm, I'm, I'm only concerned about him calling me son. That, that, that's the only title I'm worried about. Church members want to make sure that I get the good seat so everybody can see me. Christians are concerned about being in the house so he can see me. So, so you know, church members bother me just a little bit. I'm sorry, they just a little bit. But if I can get together with a few people who love Jesus, a few people who love the Lord, a few people who said, I came to spend some time with the Lord. I, if I can just hang out with some folks who said, I love him, I'm all right. I'm all right. All right, I'm, not, I'm trying not to get started because there's two people I need to come and do something for me. Uh, so so I'm, I'm trying to be good here, but you, you don't know. You just don't know. You just don't know. You don't know. Every now and then, every now and then, you know, I, I tell people all the time, when, when, when you come to Open Door, we, we give you a program and all that, and then I tell most folks, put them down because, you know, we might or might not follow that. It, it, 
is basically just to tell you who we are and what we do, but don't follow that because we're going to follow what the Lord says. It might say, you know, it might say it's time for, for praise and worship, and we might start preaching. It might be time for the message, and there might be some praise going on. You don't know. I just want to spend some time with the Lord. That's all. I, you don't mind. I tell my people all the time, I come to church, and I'm going to talk to the Lord. You just get to listen in while I talk to him. Mm, okay. Settle down. Settle down. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. It sounds like music in my ear. Sweet as a name on earth. See now, you, you got to really love him to say, Oh, mm, how I, I love Jesus. Hey, oh, 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 how. Just blood. Some folks, I just love them. Some folks know about him. Some folks have heard about him. Some folks have ever seen some things he's done, but they don't love Jesus. I love him this morning. And I love him not because of what he's doing today or, or anything. I love him because of what he did 2,000 years ago. See, you know a gift is good when 2,000 years later you're still talking about it. Some of us can't tell you about the gifts we got last year for Christmas. And that's only been a couple of months. But he gave me a gift 2,000 years ago and I'm still talking about it. I can't stop talking about the gift he gave me. 
wrapped it up in a nice pretty box called his own body, climbed up on a cross and hung himself so I could live. That's the kind of gift, that's the kind of God I serve. He couldn't find anything better to give me, so he gave me the best of heaven, which was himself. Uh, slow yourself down, slow yourself. Aaron, come here, Aaron. Come here. Every time I come here, we sit down, sit down, sit down. We are blessed to have a time of sharing, and it is about the testimony of what God has done. And normally, Pastor would just say, is there anybody who has something that they would like to share? But I want this brother to just take a moment and to share his testimony. Aaron, come here. Come here, my brother. Yo espero que ustedes hablen español, pero yo no hablo inglés. No, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Where I got into, right? Can somebody shout hallelujah? I think we could do better than that. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? I don't know, but I'm, I'm always getting set up for something. It's always been like that. They always got a surprise. And he's always been like that. He's, he's notorious for that. That man right there is notorious for that. Morales is notorious for that. So, but we're here. And I know what God has done in my life. Uh, when she was speaking, Lovely lady, sister, princess, Jerry. Jerry. Amen. I just saw the word of John, and he describes us in the hand of God. And he says, and, and nobody could take you out of there. And I'm looking at God's hand, and I see all my former brothers that were incarcerated with me. And I'm looking at God's grace and love and kindness. And I'm saying, wow, God, you're so real. I did 11 years. Came from Puerto Rico with a mission. I completed it. And I got incarcerated. They gave me 12 years. I was a former gang member. And I said, you know what? Uh, what I'm going to do now? I found a guy that was running with me the same same gang, and, and I said, I don't know what to do. I gave all my life to this. And look at where I'm at again. I need to follow somebody that is a true leader because I'm willing to give my all. And he said, I don't know what to tell you, bro, but there's going to be consequences. I said, I'll deal with it as long as I have a a leader to follow, and somebody that gives me purpose in life, I will follow. It came with challenges. It came with, with learning and with tests and doubts and screaming and yelling and pain. But I'm still here. I'm still here for the grace of God. I suffer a great loss with my mother. And that was a point that broke me because that's the only thing I had in life. And I said, I'm not going to serve you no more. You've done more wrong to my life than good. 
I've been through hell and back. God, what is this? I thought this was going to be easy. I thought it was going to be charming and loving like your word says. And I took off. I said, you know what? I took off in a prison. Who does that? I'm like, I'm going to just hibernate or isolate myself from my cell, five by seven cell, and just walk in circles in there. He's fighting with the love of Jesus, trying to hug me in that cell. Sending me brothers like Nappy, like Maldonado, like Figueroa, like Thompson, and the rest of the brothers that continue in there. Hugging me through the gate. Come on. Come on. And I just saw that hand again that I saw today. That amazing hand full of blood. But at the end of the day, it don't stain me, but it cleans me. I could ruin my shirt or my clothes or anything with my blood. And it's hard to come out. But his blood is so amazing that you don't see a spot. All you see is cleanness. And not by my works, but by through his works. By grace, through faith. And he walked me through. He lifted me up. Put me under his wing and the rest of the brothers. Walked me through to the day of the day that I maxed out in October 11th. And I said, what now? I don't have nobody in Jersey. And I said, where I'm going to live, where I'm going to stay, where I'm going to work, where I'm going. But in the middle of all that, God was just preparing the way, Rev. And I didn't believe it up to today. I still don't believe it. I'm still like, ah, I got, like, got odds, like, like amazed. Put me with a family that picked me up from the ground, told me, look, you're going to live here. You're going to have this job. I don't know nobody in Jersey. And I sell cars. And the way we sell cars is we got to call people. We got to know people that knows people and they know people. So it ain't like people walk in the dealer. And hello. No, no, it's none of that. You got to hustle your way in. And that's what I used to do in the street. I used to hustle hard. I used to hit the bricks. So I said, you know what? I'm going to use the same skill, but in a good way. And I have sold 15 cars now. <laughs> and people are like, what? How he does that? Well, grace serve God, and he'll tell you how to do it. He'll put grace. Got four months and some change. I preached three times already. Get my testimony. About five people have already saved by the grace of God. Because I love God, and I like to share my testimony and say, you know what? What he done for me, he might not do for you because you're a different person. But I know one thing. He's going to do something miraculously in your life. He probably healed me. He probably won't heal you at the same time he did for me. But he's going to do something big in your life. You just got to believe. You just must believe. Solamente cree. Si tuviera fe como un grano de mostaza. Eso lo dice el Señor. Look at that, look at that, look at that. It says, if you only have faith like a mustard seed, you will tell that mountain to move and it will move. And it will move. And it, it's not a lot of faith. It's not required a lot of faith. A little bit. Just a tiny bit, a little effort. Just jump. Believe me, he will do something miraculously. My name is Aaron Velez. I live in Bergen County, Edgewater. I'm up there. I'm at your service. At the end, if you want to grab my number, you grab it. But I know one thing, that I know what Jesus has done in my life. And he is a great God. And I love him. And I love him. And I love him. And I love him, man. And Rev, Rev, Rev. Oh, my God, Rev. You're amazing, man. You're amazing, man. God has... Use you in a way that you don't even know. In my meditations, I think about this man and the man of God that I knew. She like a jazz. Yeah, he could dance. He could do that thing. He could, he could slide. I like it when he slides. But 
you think about this journey in life and you say, wow, God has brought me. A venecer. A venecer. Says, until now, God has saved us. Until now. To this moment. Right now, Nat. He's done what he's done for you and me. Can't think about tomorrow. What about the rapture? What about this right now? We're just, we're out. But I know today he's with us. Thank you for this moment. Beautiful church. And I love you, Rev. The Lord knows how. The Bible says he does all things well. And if the Bible didn't say it, I would say it myself. He does all things well. Grab your Bibles, if you would, and turn to the 22nd chapter of 1 Samuel. The 22nd chapter of 1 Samuel. I just want to read two verses. I'm going to ask my wife if she would come and bless us with a song. 1 Samuel chapter 22. I'm going to begin reading right at verse 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dullam, and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. You don't have to turn there, but if you looked at chapter 25 and verse 13, it says, besides this 400, there were 200 more. And so I want to take a moment this morning and talk to you about 600 worthless men. 600 worthless men. You may be seated. Come, dear, and bless us. Doc, I know that's my, that's, that's my, that's my baby right now. So all y'all unattached fellas, and she's taken. <clears throat> uh, she is mine. I do not share. Uh, she can pray for you. She can love you, but she's mine. Praise God. This is a tearful Sunday. Praise God. I feel like I'm back at home. Hallelujah. This never been a time in my life when Jesus didn't love me. There's never been a time in my life when he did not care for me. There's never been a time in my life when he did not comfort me. Can nobody be God, be God? There has never been a time in my life that Jesus didn't love me. There's never been a time in my life when he did not care for me. There's never been a time in my life that he did not comfort me. Can nobody beat God, being God? 
couldn't do it or he'd have made his own death behave Confucius couldn't do it he did not survive cause God is the only one and he's still couldn't do it or he'd have made his own death behave Confucius couldn't do it <laughs> he did not survive Obviously, she didn't feel like singing this morning. <laughs> you sure? Okay. All right. All right. Next time I'm gonna have her actually sing. She was just okay. Can't nobody be God. Be in God. You know, I, I tell the saints sometimes. I love the book of Isaiah because Isaiah shares some things with us that you're not gonna find anywhere else. I love to read the book of Isaiah. I said that that's God's arrogant book. He has the right to be arrogant. When you when you got it going on like God, you can you can stand up and you can say some things. But it is in the book of Isaiah where God asked the question, um, "Who's like me? Uh, who you got like me? Uh, you go out into the forest, cut down a tree, give part of it to the carpenter to build you a house." you put some of it in the fire to cook your food and you take it over to somebody else and you have them craft a God out of it. But, but uh, who you got like, like, like me? Uh, see, your God, if you want him in your situation, you got to carry him over there and put him in. He can't talk, he can't walk, he can't hear, he can't do anything for you. But now who you got like me? God says in the book of Isaiah, he says, I sit on the circle of the earth. I run stuff. I called it into existence. Who you got like me? And see, I love the fact that God, see, God is, is just smart enough to say, don't, don't, don't answer that, don't answer. Because some of y'all might try to come up with an answer. Don't answer that. Let me answer the question for you. Ain't nobody like me. He said, who you got? Yeah, ain't nobody like me. No, no, nobody. See, because when I say stuff, things happen. I would say that when your God says stuff, nothing happens, but your God don't say anything. 
he can't even talk. When, 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 when situations arise, I show up. I, I'd say your God doesn't show up, but he can't move, so you already know he doesn't show up. When you cry out to me, I hear you. I'd say your God don't listen, but he can't hear anyhow, so we ain't gonna worry about that. I can see everything that you're going through, and I'd say your God ain't paying attention, but he can't see anyhow. Who you got? Like me. A ain't nobody like my God. And I would tell you on today, if you got a God that isn't like mine, you might want to see me before service is over. Let, 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 let me introduce you to the, the definite article, the real God. Not a, the. There's no group like his. I tell people all the time, when you listen to the attributes of God and how great God is, get you a notebook and start writing down. When you finish that page and you want to start writing about everybody else, get a new book. Don't nobody belong on his page. And ain't, ain't nobody got any reason to be that close to my God because you ain't got nothing that he can, uh, okay. Let me get to these men. 600 worthless men. 600 worthless men. Now, preacher, you came into the church service to talk about a whole bunch of worthless people. What better place to talk about worthless people than with a bunch of worthless people? Don't get mad. Y'all stay right there in your seat. Deke, I'm going to need you in a minute. Now, listen. Let me explain something to you. The Bible says that David goes out to the cave at Adullam. Now, he's being chased. He's being being persecuted, he's being pursued by somebody that wants to take his life, that wants to take him out because he recognizes the blessing of God on his life. And the Bible says that when David heads out to the cave, the first people that show up are family. It says his father and his family come out to him at the cave. But in the second verse, it says everybody that was in distress, everybody that was in debt, everybody who was discontented, they all gathered themselves unto David. Now, you got to see this picture. You, you got to jump ahead a few years. There's a passage of Scripture that talks about David's mighty men. Oh, we love that passage. It talks about his heroes, his champions, his giant slayers. It talks about the people who were able to go out and to accomplish great things, but they started out as 600 worthless men. I, I want you to get a hold of this picture. They started out as the discontented, the upset, the folks in debt, the people nobody liked, the people that were cast off. Some of y'all in them cages, you know what I'm talking about. But they didn't stay there. They got close to the man of God, and God began to work with them, and their end testimony was a lot different than their beginning. They started out as ones nobody wanted. But when God got finished, their testimony was that they were mighty, men. They were giant slayers. They were people who attacked the problem with great vigorous attitudes. David had men who would tell him when he wanted a drink of water and he was on the run from Saul, he said, oh, I wish I could get a drink from the well huh, back there in Jerusalem, but I can't go there right now. Saul's trying to take me out. I'm just going to sit here in my cave and long for a drink of water. But they tell me that he had a crew that said, he want to drink from where? Uh, we got this one. Don't you worry about it, Dave. We're going to get you the drink of water you want from the well you want it from. We're going to go get that for you. These were his mighty. These were the worthless folks that ran out there to him because nobody else wanted them. But they turned into something a lot greater. And many of us in our lives, people have said some stuff about you and told you you're worthless. They've told you, you know what? You got too much going on. You got some stuff happening in your life. You're not even worthy of us talking about. Just go on over there in the shadows and sit over there and be quiet. We'll tell you what you think. We'll tell you what you're going to be. But you forgot to talk to God. You forgot to ask the only person who has the right to say who I am and what I'm going to do. You forgot to mention to him that you decided you was going to run my life. I don't think he's okay with that. See, he created me from the beginning and from the foundation of the world. He wrote a plan for my life, and you can't change it. So, okay, you think I'm a worthless man. Let me tell you a little something. People have been going through a lot and are in need of some leadership. They really have. I told y'all, I've been going through some stuff. And, and, and I've learned something that the Lord has shown me. Sometimes leaders have to go through things so we can lead people through some stuff. See, we always, see, a lot of folks love to stand up in front so they can be seen. You don't know what it costs 
I used to argue with people that say, if, if only you knew. Now I stop saying it. When people tell me, oh, I wish, I do this. Because trust me, I figured out it don't take more than a couple of days before they write back going. One of the sisters in my church, she told me, she said, Pastor, she actually does, does some housework for a friend of ours. Actually, many of the, of the saints, who, many of the brothers who came through Trenton remember Bishop Ravenel. Reverend Ravenel was the, was the chaplain there in Trenton for a long time. And she works for him doing some work in his home. And she said, you know what? I used to think you preachers had it so easy. She said, I thought y'all just get up on Sundays and you preach and you take up the offering and that's all you did. And I never understood why you was always talking about how hard your life was. That is until I went to work for the bishop and I sat there in his house one day and I noticed the phone just kept ringing and folks stopping by and everybody had a need and he had to answer. She said, y'all go through a lot. I said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She said, Pastor, I'm going to pray for you. I said, thank you. <laughs> thank you. But you've got to understand, when the Lord has something for you, it doesn't matter what it looks like in the beginning. Don't let anybody stick you at your start. Please understand, the race isn't run at, isn't won at the starting line. It's won at the finish line. You got to run the race. Now, I don't care if you stumbled coming out. I don't care if somebody clipped you, tripped you, or knocked you down. Get up and keep going. You've got to understand something. I watched a video the other day. There was a young woman. It was an old video of a track meet. There were three teams that were competing. And on the one team, it was a relay race. On the one team, one of the runners in the race fell down. The other teams are just blowing. They just, they just going. They, they got a full lap lead. And she gets up and she brushes herself off and she kind of walks up to the next person and she don't even want to hand over the baton. She gave up. But the sister that had the last leg, she grabbed the baton and when she got to kicking, before they knew anything, you hear the announcer's voice begin to change. You know something is happening. He says, well, you know, it's nice to see that they continue to compete. It's nice to see that they didn't give up. And then you notice his voice begin to elevate. She's making up some ground. Oh, she's getting kind of close. Oh my goodness, look at what we got going on here. She done caught the second place. For, look at her, she just, oh my God. Before you know it, she had run everybody down and won the race by half a lap because she didn't give up. See, the other folks had got contented. They said, well, she done fell. We don't even have to run hard now. We're just cruising. And before they know it, they saw her pass by. Now they want to start running and try to catch. It's too late. David's worthless men come to him and they say, Dave, we got all kinds of issues and problems and we see that everybody's on your case and you come out here, so we're going to come out here with you. And what they do is they pledge their lives to David. And wherever David goes, they go. And they get this brother's back like you would not believe. Nothing's going to happen to Dave because Dave is the one person who continued to believe in us when nobody else would. When everything else was going wrong, David believed in us. And so we are going to commit ourselves to David as our king. And no matter what happens, ain't nothing going to happen to David because I'm going to give my life for him. And I want you to understand something. I'm not telling you to dedicate yourself to any pastor. I'm telling you that you need to look to the king of kings and you want to commit your life to him. Ain't nothing going to happen to Jesus. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to be right. You can't talk about my God around me because if you really want to start an argument with me, start talking about Jesus. Go ahead. Say something slick about him and watch what I tell you. Oh, I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to put my hands on you. I'm going to lay the Lord on you. I'm going to let you know who he really is. He's not the guy who's playing these games that we see out here in the world. I talked to my people a couple of months ago. I talked to them about the difference between Bible Jesus and church Jesus. In case you didn't know, there is a difference. See, church Jesus is okay with me coming in a half hour late every week. Church Jesus is okay with me slipping by the offering plate and just touching the plate. Church Jesus is okay if I talk about you after service. Church Jesus is okay if I put him down for a moment and cuss somebody out. Church Jesus is okay if I end up sleeping with three or four folks in the church instead of just my own. Church Jesus is okay with the little nip I got to take every now and then to take the edge off. Church Jesus is okay with my attitude. Church Jesus is okay with all the mess I bring because he loves me just the way I am. That's church Jesus. Folks out here love church Jesus. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. They'll drop an F-bomb in the middle of the prayer because they're talking to church Jesus, and he don't mind. But I challenge you to pick up that book and begin to learn about Jesus. The one who said, yeah, yeah, come, come. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Wait, wait, wait. That sounds like you want me to change. Oh, I'm sorry. You thought I was church Jesus. No, 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 no. Let me tell you how this really goes. If any man be in Christ Jesus, all things are passed away, and behold, all things have become. Oh, oh, that, that's Bible Jesus. Y'all didn't hear about him? You got to understand something. Bible Jesus is the one who tells me, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Bible Jesus is the one who says, I'll put my words in your mouth that you might be able to speak the words of life, and they are life. And they mm, yeah. Some of these people not, might not fit into the categories we consider good people. You know, we've all got our good people category. I think it's wonderful when people start talking about who's a good person. Because usually the standard is, I'm good. And if you're like me, then you're good. If you're not like me, you got some issues and problems. I love you, but you've got some issues. What we forgot to do was talk to Bible Jesus. Because I remember a rich man walked up to him and said, good master, he, oh, ain't nobody good but God. Wait, wait, that Jesus, that sounds like you said I'm not good. <laughs> oh, you heard that. You heard when I, yeah. Because in another passage of scripture, he had one of his apostles write and say, all we like sheep have gone astray. He said, there is none that is righteous. No, not one. Wait, wait, wait. Now, hold on. Jesus, you keep saying stuff like that. I'm going to think that I'm not a very good person. You, you, you're listening. You're hearing me, son. But I'm not trying to leave you there. I came for you. I came. See, that's the other side you have to understand about this worthless thing we're talking about. People who think that they're worth all of this don't think they need Jesus. I'm good. I, 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 I'm all right. You don't understand <clears throat> who I am. I do. <laughs> you don't. I know who you are. See, because I talked to Bible Jesus, and he told me all about you. While he was talking about me, yeah, he was talking about you too. And he told me some stuff. He told me how you needed to have a conversation with him. He told me how if you loved him like you say you loved him, your life would be a little different. He told me how if you would just come, he'd do a work in your life that would amaze you. That, that's, that's, that's Bible Jesus. You, you keep hanging out with church Jesus. That's all right. These worthless people have a sense of loyalty and trust for the one who understands them and cares for them. You can see somebody who truly has a love for the Lord and knows where he brought them from. And you ain't going to shake them from Jesus. You're not going to move. There is no obstacle that they are going to run up against that is going to make them turn away from Jesus because they know where they came from. See, when we begin to think that we were so good before we got here, when things get a little bit tough, we say, oh, well, you know, I can always just walk off because I was all right before I got here. You got that message wrong. When you understand just how bad off you really were, where are you going to go? Jesus asked his disciples, he said to Peter and to the rest of them, when the folks walked away from him, he said, y'all going to leave too? I love Peter because Peter never had a problem with his mouth. That brother couldn't hold his tongue to save his life. If it had to be said, Peter going to spit it out. Jesus said, y'all going to leave me too? Peter said, where are we going? You got the words of life. Where, where are we? we? No, we ain't going nowhere. You have the words of life. We going to be right here with you. And all the mess that Peter went through, even denying the Lord, all the chaos that he went through, where did he end up? Right back with Jesus. Because even after all of his mess, Peter understood, ain't no better place for me to be than with Jesus. Who else is going to love me like him? Who else is going to put up with my mess and help me to overcome the things? Oh, okay. David surrounded himself with the outcasts of society and turned them into a mighty men. When God begins to move in your life, you don't have to worry about what you have been or what people are going to say about you not being able to be. 
I'm standing before you right now. I pastor a church in Trenton, and a few years ago, nobody would have seen that. It's amazing when I go out and I begin to talk to different people, I usually go to two different types of places. I either go to a religious setting or a secular setting. And depending on which setting I'm going to, depending on who invited me, that's how the introduction is given. Sometimes I go places that I'm just Dr. Thompson. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'll stand up and I'll begin talking and somebody will say, wow, you talk about this prison thing. You are really adamant about that. I say, oh, I forgot to tell you. My real name is 204-289-97607B. And they say, what, 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 I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For like 30 years, that was my name. 204-289-97607B. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Look at all the heads. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got you. You have to begin. Then they start saying, well, where did that come? That sounds like a prison number. Hello? You know an awful lot about Trenton State Prison. Walked the hallways for 25 years. What's your point? I had a young woman that was a corrections officer at Trenton State Prison, and she ran into me somewhere. She said, I know you. I know you. Where do I? Oh, you look. I know you. And I just said, let her, let her stress for a little while. She said, I know. I, I, oh, did you work at Trenton State Prison? I said, I had a job there. <laughs> I, had, I had several jobs there. I most certainly did. <laughs> For a long time, I was, yeah. She said, that's where, I, that's where I know you from. I know you from Trenton. You, you worked in the, uh, you worked in the, uh, oh, uh, where, where were you? What, what department were I? Said, I was in food services for a while. And then I moved over to social services for a while. And she said, uh, she said, yeah, you were, oh, man. She said, I can't remember your name. I said, oh, my name is Thompson. She said, yeah, wait. <laughs> Thompson, you wouldn't be related to the guy. They had, there was an inmate down there by the name of Thompson. I said, I know him very well. I said, I, uh, I, I, I'm very close to him. He, he, he means a lot to me. She said, yeah, he was something. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> Tell me about him. <laughs> and she began to talk about my testimony. And after she talked for a little while, I said, ma'am, that's me. I said, I did work, I had jobs in the prison while I was incarcerated. I was there for 25 years. She said, no way, nope, I don't believe it. She said, there's no way you were there. She saw David's mighty man. But what I was telling her about was the worthless man. She couldn't see the two. She couldn't see how the worthless man became the mighty man that she knew. And I had to explain to her, no, I'm not, this because of anything I've done. But I got real close to Jesus and I took all my worthlessness right over to him and I said, Lord, if you can do anything with this, go right ahead. And God began to move so mightily in my life that folks can't see that anymore. Sometimes when I begin to talk about stuff, I get this idea. People look at me and they go, no, no, that's not how. That can't be you. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you see the giant slayer. You got to see the guy who was over in the corner a few years. You see the one who runs up to situations and comes there with the power of prayer in his mouth. You see the one who can give you scripture for what you're going through, but you didn't see the guy who was cutting corners and who was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't see the one who ran away from trouble. You don't see the one who was the problem. You don't see the worthless man. And I'm going to tell you why you don't see it, because God killed him a long time ago. Jesus wants to do the same and more for many of us who have these crazy backstories. You got to understand something. If you look at some of the most iconic characters in scripture, every one of them has a backstory. Okay? With the exception of one or two, everybody that God used had some issues. David had a little problem with the sisters. And, uh, you know, he had a little attitude problem, a little ego issue at the end of his life. The Bible says that when he was coming down to the end of his days, he told his generals, go count the people. Go, 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 go count the people. I, I want to know just how big a king I am. You had Solomon, who was used mightily with all of his wisdom and his wealth, but Solomon got him a little attitude. Solomon had 900 women in his life. 900 women in his life. 
You got the Apostle Paul, and everybody talks about the authority with which Paul spoke, but we forget about the fact that this was the man who had arrest warrants for Christians, who had no problem locking them up. So much so that when Paul got saved and went into the church at Damascus where he was going to arrest folks, they had to sneak him out of the city because nobody believed his testimony. We've already talked about Peter, who was among the Lord's closest three. You had the circle, the inner circle, and the intimate circle. Peter stood in the intimate circle. When the Lord would go anywhere with his disciples, the crowd would move. And every now and then he would take the 12 and say, no, no, y'all come over here for a minute. I need to talk to my boys for a second. And then every now and then he'd say, no, no, Peter, James, John, come here. I need to talk to you for a moment. Peter stood as close to the Lord as you can get, but there came a point in time where somebody said, you know him. No, I don't. You hung out with him. No, I didn't. You talk like him. No, I don't. Mm-mm. This is the man who the Lord uses mightily on the day of Pentecost. It's not John, the only one of the apostles to go with him through it all. It's not James, the other part of the sons of thunder. No, it's the guy who said, I don't even know him, who the Lord uses to preach the first evangelistic message and bring thousands of people to Christ. Don't tell me what a backstory means. I'm mindful of the fact that we got some issues in our back. I'm mindful of the fact that some of us got some issues right now. But I'm here to tell you this day that you might have started out as one of the worthless, but God can move you over to mighty. You don't have to sit down and be satisfied with the testimony that Satan wants to put on your life. Let me tell you about another testimony that Satan gave. I tell people all the time, when you read the book of Job, we all know what God said. We all know what Job did. But there's a little testimony in that book that you need to pay attention to. It was given by Satan himself. God said, have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, I ain't messing with him. Nah, bro, you got him locked up. You got him covered. Does he praise you for no reason? Satan's testimony about Job was that this is a man I'm not messing with because you got him. Let me explain something to you. God has already told me what he thinks about me. And I've already heard what some of y'all think about me. But I know there's a guy roasting right now who hates when I show up. Because every time I come around, I'm telling all of his stories. I'm bringing out all of his lies. I'm exposing him every chance I get. And all he does is sit around and say, there he go again. Somebody tell that boy to shut up. I'm tired of him talking about it. That's right, Satan. Come on, tell my testimony. Tell people what I'm all about. Let it be known. You've got to get to the place where even the devil in hell is telling your testimony. You've got to trust God so much that no matter what you're going through, no matter where you've been, no matter what the enemy has tried to do, in the end, everybody, including him, has to stand there and say, no, that's one of God's mighty men. Can't bother. That's one of God's mighty men. Every time he shows up, something happens. I had a whole trick going on. He gonna show up and start praying. I had that sister believe in all kinds of stuff. He got the nerve to show her a Bible. Yes, I do. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell his story. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell people all about him. I'm gonna tell them everything he did. You don't have to, I'll tell them myself. I like telling people where I came from. I love the look on people's faces when they go, you came from, you, wait, wait, what? But they just called you doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm, got that too. And did they just call you pastor? Yes, they did. Come by and see me sometime. But you said you, you was in prison. Yes, I was. 30 years. I said that to one person. <laughs> I said, Jerry, I said, I was in prison for 30 years. She said, straight? <laughs> I said, yeah, all at one time. <laughs> I, you, you don't have to go there and add it up. You ain't go, it wasn't five here and six. No, no, no. That was one, one shot, sister. And she said, and yet, 
And that's all she could say. And yet, I said, yeah, because I met a man while I was there. I met a man while I was there. And he did some things. And he changed some stuff. He started out by exposing some stuff. That's why I love what Brother Aaron said when he said he got alone. Most of us would never tell that testimony. I got mad at God and walked off. No, we, you know, we're holy. We, don't, we, we never get mad at God. We have never been upset with the Lord. We have never had issues. We agree with all of God's decisions. Everything the Lord says, we say amen. Mm -hmm. John had a sentence for you in his, in his epistle. He said, you a liar and the truth ain't in you. Because I don't know about you, but uh, every now and then, I say, God, are you sure? You want me to do that? Can we talk about that for a minute? Come on, come on, Lord, let me talk to you over here for a minute. Now, you're talking to me, God. They're not listening. You don't really want me to do, yeah, I do, son. But God, that's, that's the valley of the shadow of death. You really want me to walk through? There's a beautiful path right over here on the side. Can I go this way? No, no, son, go that way. But Lord, look, there's blue skies and the birds are singing and everything is going. Do you want, you, do I really? It's raining and stormy and nasty. And he said, that's why I need you to go that way. Because there's some folks caught up in the rain and the storm and the wind. And I need you to show them the way out. You got to get in there to bring them out. 600 worthless men. 600 men that Israel said, we don't need you. 600 men that were discontented, that were upset, that were in debt, that had been personally abused, that felt like outcasts, that nobody cared about. 600 people disappeared from society and nobody went looking for them. 600 worthless men that said, we will follow King David because there's something going on with this man and we want to be close to him. 600 worthless people that later on somebody looked back and said, these are some mighty brothers. They took down kings. They trampled armies. And when folks came after them, God gave them strength that could only be accounted to him. David and his men went on a raid, and when they came back, somebody had raided them, took all their stuff, their family, their wives, their goods, and ran off. The one time Folks got upset with David. They said, Dave, you had us out here doing all this stuff, and look at what happened. David goes before the Lord and says, God, what do I do? Go get it. Go get your stuff. David tells his men, come on, let's go. We're going to get it all back. They bring all their stuff, all their wealth, all their property, all their material, their wives and their children, they bring everybody home. When God sets a plan in motion, I don't care what interruption the enemy tries to put in place, God is going to work things out according to his plan. The devil can't stop it. Nobody can interrupt it. Nobody can move it. Nobody can veto it. He don't have to ask your permission. He don't need anybody to second his emotions. When God says it is, I have come to this conclusion. In life, people are going to tell you a lot. The enemy of your soul is going to whisper in your ear every chance he gets. But if you will trust God, I do not care where you have begun. If you will believe him, no matter what they call you today, when you stand before the King of Kings on that day, you get to hear the greatest pronouncement you've ever heard. I know what people have said about me. I've heard some things that people never thought I would hear. These masks are some wonderful things. I've walked up on people while they were talking and didn't know I was standing right next to them. I like these things. 
Some of it hurts. I'm just like everybody else. I don't like people tearing into me when I know I haven't done anything. I don't like people tearing into me when I know I have done things. Oh, yeah, Let, let's be real. Some of the stuff folks are saying about us is true. Okay, let's, let's, not, let's not all get high and mighty and think, you know, well, they're always lying on me. Yeah, they are, but they're also telling the truth about you too. Some of that little devious stuff they're talking about, don't stand there and go, I can't believe you're saying that about me. What you ought to be saying is, I can't believe you told everybody that story. They didn't all have to know. It's yours. But what God has given you is, I'm not there anymore. When people say to me, I remember you when, I always say, good. I don't have to start my testimony back there. Let's pick up with the stuff you don't know. How much do you remember? Mm. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff that happened after that. Let me tell you what happened after that. If you will trust God, if you will believe him, if you will walk with him faithfully, if you will honor what he says in his word, you will find that there's a day coming when you'll be on the list of his mighty men. You'll be counted among the giant slayers. You'll be counted among the ones who silence the mouth of gainsayers. You'll be counted among those who stopped armies. You'll be counted among those who held off death. You'll be counted among those who snatched back some that the enemy tried to destroy. You'll be counted among those who got wanted posters up in hell because the enemy is trying to take you out. If you will, but trust him. Yeah, somebody might call you worthless, but God calls you mighty. Isn't his testimony worth it? Isn't the word of God worth it? There was an old song they used to sing. Say, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. It will be worth it all when we see God. You got to know that all the stuff you're going through, everything, everything, God has a purpose for. What you've been through becomes your testimony. What you're going through is just your test. In the end of it all, it's God's glory. Let me encourage you today that no matter what you have faced, trust God. He's worthy. He's absolutely worthy. You sang a hymn this morning. <laughs> so amazing. How great thou art. But I think sometimes we don't really listen. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul. My Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. It says, when through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountains grandeur, see the brooks, and I feel the gentle breeze. Then sings my soul, my savior, oh my God, how great thou art. My verse is this, when I look back over my life and I see the things I've done. When I imagine where I should be, and yet I'm close to God's only son, 
then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. How great thou art. Then, then, then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior. To thee, how great thou art, hmm. how great thou art. Come on, think about your problem. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee.
how great Thou art 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 Hallelujah. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your difficult moment is. I don't know what lie the enemy has been trying to get you to believe. But will you trust God today? If you don't know him, if you just think, you know, if you're not sure, there are men and women here who will pray with you. Come and get to know him. Get to know the great God, the great God that we serve, the reason why we praise, the reason that we rejoice, the reason you look and see worthless and we hear him declare mighty. If you don't know him, don't leave here without getting to know him. If you're not sure, fix it. He's here. And I know he's here because he promised me that we're two or three were gathered together in his name. He'd be there. I'm not telling you something somebody told me. I'm not telling you something I heard somewhere. I'm telling you what I know. He's here. You don't have to leave him. If there is weight that you're carrying today, the enemy has tried to convince you that your past is so heavy, you can't get out from under it. You are what you were. And you needed to know. Mm -mm. That may be his testimony of you, but God has a different testimony of you. If you are struggling, if you are battling, if you are fighting, come now and let us pray with you. I, I don't care what the concern is. I know a God who's able. I know a God who's greater. I know a God who can handle every situation. The weights that you're carrying, he's able. Don't, don't, don't take them away from here with you. Bring them to the altar and let us pray with you. Let us pray for you. The Bible says we can cast our cares on him because he cares for us. You're not just throwing them because I just got to get them off of me, but there's somebody who wants to take them. Let me tell you a little secret. If you just throw them, somebody going to find them and bring them back to you. If you just drop them, somebody going to discover them because they got your name on them, and they're going to bring them right back to you. But if you give it to Jesus, the Bible says, he casts it into the sea of forgetfulness. And ain't too many people scuba diving for your sin. When he casts it, it's gone. Never to be remembered anymore. Whatever your weight, bring it to the Lord and let him handle it. My Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art.
God, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and for your loving kindness unto us. God, we thank you for what you've brought us through. We thank you for what you're bringing us through. We thank you, God, right now for what you're going to take us through. Many have been the storms of recent days, but you've delivered us from them all. Some, God, you've called to be with you. We miss them and our hearts ache, but we rejoice because your word tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with you. Today, God, we pray for those of us who yet remain, that you would strengthen us to the task at hand, that we would hear your testimony of who we are and that we would walk worthy of the great King. Strengthen everyone here under the sound of my voice on every leaning side. Hold them with your mighty hand. Go before us and make our pathway straight. Be our strength in every moment, and we will give you praise. We will magnify your name because, God, we know that you alone are worthy of all praise. Now, unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to present you before the throne of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, God love you, and God keep you. church that's waiting so uh to come in so if you would just kindly vacate the building we would appreciate it we know you want to give each other love but you can go into the fellowship hall but there's another church waiting to get in